So welcome everybody to Webinar Wednesday from Sight and Sound Technology. Great to be back as always. My name is Stuart Lawler and my colleague Carl Braley, live from our new offices, uh, is joining us. Carl is in, in, uh, in situ in our new offices, uh, which are just down the road from our old offices. Um, but uh, anyway, we're delighted to be back. And today is a major event for us because we are unveiling the Braille Sense 6 latest and greatest note taker from Selvis Healthcare, which we are really excited to be getting our hands on very, very soon and excited to be showing to lots of people. And we're absolutely delighted in order to show us everything and talk to us all about it to have um, Jenny Axler from Selvis in Korea. Jenny has joined us previously on our webinar sessions and we're thrilled that she can join us again. Now, before we hand over to Jenny, we'd love to hear your comments and questions during the session today. And you can get in touch with us by raising your hand by pressing Alt and H uh, if you're on a PC or activating the raise hand button on a mobile phone. Similarly, you can chat by pressing Alt and, uh, sorry, Alt and, Alt and H is to chat. Alt and Y is to raise your hand. So if you wanna chat, Alt and H uh, or activate the chat button on your mobile phone. And as Carl always mentions, if you are chatting, please make sure to send your message to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see everybody else's uh, questions. And Carl will be keeping an eye on the raised hands and the chats, and we'll make sure to uh, take your questions as we go along. We also received some email qu uh, questions in advance of the session, and thank you to people who got in touch with us. And I will uh, uh, send those, or rather be, I will be putting those to Jenny during the session. So we're delighted to have uh, everybody here. Uh, just very final thing before I hand over to Jenny. Uh, in two weeks time, there isn't a webinar Wednesday event and that's because we're participating in Site Village Virtual. So we would really encourage you to join us for Site Village Virtual in two weeks time. Uh, we have a couple of presentations and indeed we'd, we'd strongly suggest that you explore the Site Village Virtual um, uh, seminar because there's lots of great things coming up and then we'll be back again with webinar Wednesday on the 5th of May and more information about that session will come in due course. So Jenny great to have you thank you for staying up late to join us and welcome back to webinar Wednesday. Thank you for having me. I'm always happy to be here and I'm especially happy to be here today to introduce this fabulous new product to you. Uh, some of you, I'm going to do this in two parts and some of you may have seen the first part and I do apologize for the redundancy for those of you who have seen that. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show a video that we've pre-recorded partly because we could do a lot more in a compact form that way. However, it is not overly polished and we also did that on purpose. We really want you to know that this is not a smoothed over sales video that we're really doing this. And in fact, I am making a point. So there are two sort of themes in my presentation tonight. One is keeping it real. We are doing our best to keep it real. Um, and the other one is to think outside the box in terms of what a note taker can do for you. And I go over a lot of the connectivity and various things at the end. And part of the reason I do that is just because I don't think people consider all of the different peripherals that you can use when you are connecting to a note taker. And that is especially now true with Android 10 and our four USB ports. In fact, Right now, so before I get started, I would like to let you know that I am doing everything from the Braille Sense 6. I do not, I have a PC here, but I've shut it down. So <laughs> it's of no use to me right now. Um, so I am using the Zoom app on the Braille Sense 6. I have a webcam connected to my back USB port. I have all my USB ports full. I have my power port connected to power because I'm doing a lot. And I also then have a USB mixer and I'm talking through the microphone on that. And I have um, the front port connected to a USB hub that is connected to ethernet. So I'm utilizing everything. And um, I, like I said, I'm doing all of this on the Braille Sense 6. So the first thing I would like to do, as I said, I'm gonna do this in two parts. The first part is a little bit long and I apologize for that. There's a video that's about 25 minutes long that I'm actually going to show directly from here. Um, 
The second part is uh, I will quickly sort of overview the new applications. So we'll stop after the video and take some questions. And the second part will be very short, like 10 minutes of, of demo of some of our new applications. So let me, um, I could, if I were not doing a presentation on the Braille Sense, I could access this video via Google Files and just show it. But because I am using the Braille Sense, I actually want to show one thing. Um, a lot of people are really wishing that they had the YouTube interface from the YouTube, but I gotta tell you, it's just as easy from here. And there are two ways that you could do it. One would be, from uh, our Google search app, this is where some of the magic happens. So we have our Braille Sense Google search app, but it gives you Google results. So if you were, for example, to type Braille Sense, Braille Sense 6 overview, and especially if you add the word YouTube to it, you're gonna get Braille Sense 6 YouTube videos and you can just press enter. I'm going to do this with my voice. Uh, so the first thing I need to do though, is to share my screen. So I'm gonna do that uh, and turn my voice on. Voice on, button share button, okay, press enter to activate. Uh, button share button press enter to activate just a second it's giving me an alert button, okay, press enter to activate this? only the host can share in this meeting ah <laughs> Stuart. <laughs> uh can oh, you geez, Jenny. yes <laughs> one moment this is this is okay one second zoom. we this always is, have this for, is your, for your reference Stuart. Okay, i'm shaking my head i've no doubt you are <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a regular occurrence for Carol and I, right? One I'm sec, just glad it's you and not me. Whenever I present via Zoom, it, it's inevitable. Things just happen and lock up. So just just a warning, Zoom and I don't play well together. So <laughs> Okay, Jenny, you right, should I'm be able to. Now. You're a co-host. Right. You've got more power. Button switch camera. Front camera selected. Button stop my video. Press enter to activate. Button share. Okay, button here press we go. Enter to activate. Button Microsoft OneDrive in list. 10 items. Press button screen. Press enter to activate. Screen. 8, 10. Cancel start now. Start button now. start now, press enter to okay. activate. Zoom. All right. So are you still with me? I did something yep. strange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. With you. Okay. So we are going to do a voice search with Google and I'm going to play this video. All right. So I will press my record and play buttons right now. Opening search, app. Press enter to activate. View search results. List. Button. Hymns. Braille sense. Six overview. 25 minutes. Go to channel. Hymns International. 285 views one week ago. Play video. Press enter to activate. So all I have to do now is press enter. Isn't that cool? All right. I'm going to turn my voice off before I do that. And we will play this video. So enjoy. Voice off. Hello, everyone. I'm Jenny Axler, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to this video webinar in which we will take a deep dive into some of the best features of our brand new Braille Sense 6. To summarize a bit about the system upgrades, we now have twice the storage at 128 gigabytes. We have twice the RAM at six gigabytes. We have a modern octa-core processor and with Android 10 plus four USB ports, we support a ton of peripherals and modern applications. Let's take a quick physical tour. For those Jenny, of you who can see it, it looks very much like our previous Polaris it's got model. The, um, pause and fast forward thing stuck also, on the screen at the minute. Our so previous it's... Polaris model, but you will feel oh, a few really? differences. It is thinner and lighter, um, just by a smidge. It's 705 grams, which is significantly just a lighter than our Polaris model. If you look, okay, so you're not seeing the video. No, we've got the video, but you know where if you highlight it, it leaves the play, pause, and stop thing on there. Oh, I need to hide the controls. That's it, yeah. Is that? Okay. <laughs> All right, let me play, and I think I can do that. Look at the top face. It does look very Braille Sense-ish in that there network. There you go. Yeah. Perfect. A, a set of stereo speakers, one on each side of the, the top, and an LCD in the center. We have at the bottom of the top face a 32 cell braille display with 32 cursor routers. Where you'll notice the difference is the keyboard. It now has a matte finish and it has a much lighter touch when you type on it. So I know that's a little bit difficult to show in video, but trust me, it is an enhanced typing experience. And I think you'll have a lot of trouble out typing this keyboard. We've also changed the shape of the control and alt keys, as well as the function keys to give them a more premium look and feel. 
let's flip to the front edge. And this is going to look very familiar. It's exactly the same as the Polaris model. It has the key lock switch on the left, the media mode switch next, the five media buttons for controlling media playback, DAISY playback and Android app operation. And on the right is the power button. We'll flip around to the left edge here. And we have the volume buttons as on the previous Polaris. We have the headphone and mic jacks. We do have a change here in that they are now braille labeled. Above them on the casing is um, a letter M for the microphone and a letter H for the headphone jack. So you can't mix them up. Behind those is a full size SD card slot. If we go around to the back edge, this one's very simple. We have only a USB-A host port. We'll move around now to the right edge. On the right edge, this is where we have the fun stuff. We have two USB-C ports with a USB-A port between them. And again, these have very specific purposes, so they also have specific Braille labels. The one in the back has a P above it, and I like to say this one is for power and PC, although the PC part is actually for any device that will host it, whether it be a, uh, an Android screen mirror, a Macintosh, or a PC, it doesn't matter. But it is used to power the unit and is used to connect to a PC for the terminal, for data transfer, or to anything that's going to host the Braille Sense 6. The one on the front is labeled with a letter V because it is a USB host port but is also specifically used for video out. Between them is another USB host port. So we have the power port and three USB host ports. Let's flip over to the underside of the unit. And again, this is going to look very familiar. It contains the camera and the battery compartment. And that will in fact wrap it up for the tour. So let's move on to the menus. And again, this looks very much like the traditional Braille Sense menus, but don't let that fool you. We will get to power and speed and all kinds of things that will show you that this is only the surface. So we have our file manager. Word processor, W. Our word processor. Notepad, N. Notepad. Email, E. We have email and we have combined the email and exchange email applications into one. Media, M. We have our media menu. Media player, M. With our media player. FM radio, R. FM radio. Daisy player, D. And Daisy player. Media, M. Organizer, O. And our organizer menu. Address manager, A. Schedule manager, S. Database manager, D. And yes, we have the same database manager that you guys have popularly requested from the YouTube. We have now brought it to the Braille Sense 6. Organizer, O. Web tools, B. We have our web tools menu. Web browser, B. And again, with our web browser, Google search, G. And we've kept the Google search. Web tools, B. Extras, X. We have our extras menu. Excel viewer, X. We have our Excel Online viewer. Daisy, O. Our online Daisy. Sense dictionary, D. And we now include the Sense dictionary in every unit. So this is not just a placeholder anymore. Whether you have a license or not, we do include English, US and UK, Spanish, Italian, and French. Color reader, C. And we have a new application here. We have a color reader. Extras, X, programs, R. Utilities, U. The programs menu will only exist if you have installed external applications. So we'll go on to utilities. Calculator, C. We have calculator. Real sense math, M. Real sense math. Display time and date, D. Display time World and clock, date. O. And we have a new application here, a world clock, which lets you keep track of the time and any time zone that you choose to add to it. Display compass heading, H. Display compass Wake up heading. alarm, A. Wake up alarm. Stopwatch, W. Terminal for screen reader, S. Display network status, F. display power status, format, F. Sleep timer, J. Macro manager, R. And we still have our macro manager. Upgrade braille sense firmware, U. And upgrade. Utilities, U. Settings, S. Set time and date, T. Set up internet, Bluetooth manager, menu manager, F. Backup restore braille set change device name, D. Quick start guide, Q, password protection, A, initialize braille sense options, voice options, V, language profiles, L. And there we have another new item. We now have a language profiles function, which allows you to set an unlimited number of profiles for different languages, including system language, braille code, and speech settings, as well as your voice. Braille sense global options, O. And we have our braille sense global options. Android backup reset, R. 
Android backup. Android system, system settings, E. And Android system settings, just as we have on the settings, e. help, H. We have our help. Play Store, P. We have the Play all Store, apps, A. We have our All Apps section, which again contains all of your installed Android applications. Information about the Braille Sense, I. And information about the Braille Sense. So remember all that stuff we were saying in the beginning about the double storage, double RAM, upgraded processor, Android 10, all of that? Well, I'm sure what you really want to know is what does that mean in my practical world? So let's take a look. We'll start with some speed tests. The first thing I'm going to do is open a really large file. So I'll press enter on file manager. Flash disk one three list item. And I have my flash disk. I'll press enter Books here. folder one sixteen list item. And I'm going to open Real Sense U2 user manual. Bear 9.0. Doc 16 16 list item. And anyone who has used the U2 know that the Real Sense U2 manual is like the length of a Stephen King novel, or at least close to it. It's about 460 pages. So I'm going to press enter and it's going to launch the word processor and load this file. I'm going to press enter right now. Loading. Real sense you two use. And I just pressed backspace enter to stop speech, but it's finished. It just, as soon as it started to say Braille sense you two, it was loaded. So that is how quickly things load these days. All right, let's try real sense you two copying a large file from a USB drive or a large folder. Flash disk one three list item. USB two three list documents folder one thirteen list item. I have a folder of YouTube videos that I want to copy. YouTube folder nine thirteen list item. And before I do that, let's take a look at just how big it is. So I'm gonna press enter I to get the information. Type folder one folder S seventy file S exist static box. And we're gonna size eight hundred seventy two point nine eight megabytes static box. So it's over 872 megabytes. I'll press F4. YouTube folder 913 list item. And I'm going to press enter C to copy. copy. YouTube folder not USB 2, 3, flash disk 1, 3, list books folder 116 list item. And I'm just going to put this on the root. So we'll do enter V to paste right now. Pasting. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 56, 65, 7, 80, YouTube, 85, 90, 95, 100. One objects copied. YouTube folder 16, 17 list item. All right, and that is all it took. Again, things much, much faster. Okay, now let's check out opening a media file from Google Drive. So I'm gonna press backspace. Slash this one three list item. And we'll go down to Google Drive. US Google Drive three three list item. Classroom folder one seven list item. Okay, and remember that what I'm going to do is to open a file from the internet. So it's going to download and launch the media player. So we'll press S. Sarah McLaughlin, Roland MP367 list item. And I'm going to press enter right now. One, one objects copied. Sarah McLaughlin, title, track one, Sarah McLaughlin. All right, and we are playing. Sarah McLaughlin. All right, how about web pages? Well, let's take a look at that. I will press space W, which is our global web address hotkey www.himsintl.com computer edit box. And we'll go ahead and open the HIMS INTL website, which is already filled in. I'll press enter right now. Starting web browser, www.himsintl.com. Loading. HIMS. All right. And again, we are finished. As much as I love all that power and speed, the real star of the show for me is the connectivity. With our four USB ports plus the Android 10 operating system, we have so much potential in terms of the accessories and peripherals that we can support, all the way from the practical to the frivolous. So let's start out with a bit of the practical. This is especially useful for parents and teachers, or if you want to share your screen with a colleague, etc. One of the greatest features that we're able to take advantage of is that we are now able to support USB-C portable monitors, like this little HP right here, which of course is blank right now. So let's actually remedy that. I'm going to make a lot of noise and bluster and connect this to the front USB-C port on the BrailleSense 6. And if all is according to plan, you should now see the BrailleSense main menu. Another neat little trick that we can now do is to mirror the BrailleSense 6's screen to an Android phone or tablet. 
And we can do that via an app called Braille Sense Mirroring, which you can actually download from the Play Store right now, although you won't be able to do much with it until you have a Braille Sense 6. So this time we're going to connect using the rear USB-C port, the power port. And the reason we're going to do that is because the Braille Sense will be hosted by the other device, the Android phone or tablet. Okay, so I have an Amazon Kindle and it is popping up showing me the Braille Sense memory. Depending on what phone or tablet you have, this may be different. The important thing here is to locate the uh, Braille Sense mirroring app. App switcher, button. Shop Amazon. Oh, we shop, this is the shop Amazon, Braille Sense mirroring. Okay, we're gonna start. Double tap that. And again, I'm gonna double tap start. Braille Sense mirroring. And now I have to give it permission. Allow Braille Sense cancel, button. Okay, button. Connected, top button. Okay, so now you heard several things. You heard the Braille Sense give a little bit of a sound to uh, indicate that it's connected. And you heard the Kindle announce that it's connected and now the button has changed to stop. Now, for those who are blind, you actually cannot do anything with this. This is mainly for sighted teachers, et cetera. But if the screen reader on the phone or tablet is turned off, the sighted teacher does have actually some control of the Braille Sense as well as the screen mirror. So, and also for those of you who can't see it, this is now displaying the Braille Sense main menu because that's what's displaying on the Braille Sense itself. So my screen is actually now being mirrored to the Kindle. Continuing with the visual theme, as you all know, we've been doing distance learning and working for about a year now. And oftentimes, especially in professional settings and in school settings, you are required to have your video on. You can now do that with Braille Sense 6 via a USB external webcam. So let's go to all apps. Assistant. And we'll go to Zoom. Zoom. And, I'll press and, chat. and I'm going to start a new meeting. A new chat, period. List new meeting, comma, button cancel, press enter to activate, period. Start, start a meeting. It. Button start a meeting, press enter to activate, Zoom. Button cancel, press enter to activate, period. Connecting, period. And so we're now connecting. Mute my audio, press enter to activate, period. And it should be now showing me on this terrible webcam screen as well. They tell me that the quality is not nearly as good as our cameras here. So you should definitely be able to tell the difference. And so now I am actually on a Zoom call and I am showing my webcam. Of course, remember, you can also share the Braille Census screen and show a PowerPoint or Excel or anything like that as far as a presentation goes. So this is very, very Cool for doing a full featured presentation directly from the Braille Sense. And for you audio geeks like me, we get to have even more fun because we now support generic USB audio devices, and that does include mixers. Um, so you can actually make a professional recording or a rehearsal um, a recording directly on your Braille Sense 6. And if you don't believe me, check this out. Or, or, or this. this. Yes, yes, isn't this, this fun? fun, fun, fun. <laughs> no, let's go back to this. Okay, so we have some stereo reverb. And I will actually record directly on the Braille Sense. So I'm going to press the record button from the main menu. This is the, I'm pressing the media button on the front. Record dialog. Record. Left parenthesis. Enter our right parenthesis button. Okay, and I'll press enter. Zero. And now I am recording via the Alesis mixer on the Braille Sense 6 with some stereo reverb. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop it. Play, left parenthesis, enter P, right parenthesis button. And you can hear that there is no effect on the Braille Sense. So what you're going to hear coming out of the Braille Sense is not uh, being affected by the mixer. And in fact, I'll even turn the effect on my voice off and we will press enter to play this file. Loading record zero four. And zero now four. I am recording via the Alesis mixer on the Braille Sense 6 with some stereo reverb. Okay, I'll go ahead and stop it. Play, left parenthesis, enter P. So as you can hear, it is actually recording directly from the mixer and it's giving you all the effects and anything that, of course, that you connect to it will come through. The other really cool thing about a device like this Alesis mixer is that it also has a USB return. And I'm actually using that now. I don't have it plugged in and I don't have it routed through the mixer other than via USB. And I've pressed this little switch to use um, the USB return. And so it sends the audio back. The reason that you care about this is that if you're doing something like a Zoom presentation, Android doesn't allow you to share your audio. 
However, if you're using something like this, you can just simply flip a switch to turn your Braille Sense audio on and off. I've also tried several other devices. This little deal is a Zoom AM7, and this is a USB-C stereo microphone um, for those of you that are audio geeks. It supports 90 and 120 spread as well as an MS setting. Um, and it just cor it connects directly through the USB-C cable. It's just a really, it's just a couple inches square. It's really light and small, but it makes a beautiful recording on the real sense. I've also tried these, excuse the finagling. Um, I want you to see the microphones on the outside. This is a set of earbuds called the Ambio Smart Headset. And this is actually a lightning headset. So I've used this little anchor, uh, sorry, this little anchor USB-C to lightning adapter to use this on the Braille Sense and it works beautifully and it makes an ambisonic recording. You wear them on your ears and it's a really, really great option. The other thing that I've tried is this little job. This guy is the Zoom PodTrack P4. And this is where I'm getting all my sounds. I actually just press these little buttons here. Yeah. So this is where all the sounds are coming from in this video, but I can also connect this via USB-C to the Braille Sense as well. And it also has a USB return. It has four XLR inputs. And again, this is cool because if you're on the go, you could use this to do a pretty full featured Zoom presentation, including the sounds. You have your USB return as well, so you can bring the Braille Sense audio with it. Um, and it's, again, it's very, very portable and light and it's not terribly expensive. So very cool. This really, again, offers you tons of options to play with and tons of flexibility in terms of using the Braille Sense for audio production and presentation. Let's talk about keyboards. As you know, keyboards come in many shapes and sizes and are Bluetooth, USB, wireless, etc. One of the more interesting types of keyboards that I have found is the Air Mouse Remote. And this looks very much just like a remote control. On the back of this one, there's a full QWERTY keyboard that's actually quite common with these things. They're usually used for Android smart TVs. So you can search Netflix and things like that. But you can also use it on the Braille Sense to do the exact same thing. And so if you wanna watch, these streaming services are actually quite accessible, especially on the, on the Braille Sense. So if you actually wanna watch something with your family though, you're probably gonna be plugged into a monitor and plugged into the wall, et cetera. So this is a way that you can actually connect it from far away. Now this one actually takes a wireless USB dongle. So I'm gonna connect that. I'm probably pretty in the right direction. Okay, and now I need to switch this on. And so if I- Organizer, O, web tools, B, extras, X. I am pressing the down arrow and it's actually controlling the Braille Sense. So um, I'm able to select, I'm able to uh, change volume. Main volume nine, main volume eight, main volume nine, main volume 10. And do all kinds of different things. So this is really useful. The other thing that I think this might be useful for is possibly a one-handed user who might want to augment some of the Braille Sense control with something that they can more easily do with one hand um, because it's so small and it has the very small QWERTY keyboard. It may be easier again for people with dexterity issues. So let's take a look at a couple of other things. You can use programmable keypads in the same way like this, for example. Now this one I actually purchased with round keys. And one really cool thing about it is that it came also with a set of square keycaps. And for those of you who can actually see this, I have mix and match them. So this is a macro programmable keypad. And what that means is that you can program macros and they're stored inside the keypad. So then I can connect it to the Braille Sense and actually it will be seen as a QWERTY keyboard. And as long as you set a QWERTY keystroke sequence, it will enter like that. Again, this could be useful for just shortening your own use of things. If you have a specific program like Zoom, for example, maybe you want to set a button to mute and unmute your audio, things like that. Um, you could use this again with the Braille Sense, but this is also, I think, useful again for one-handed users or for people who have dexterity issues because 
you can um, use the tactile shapes and you can make things happen with one keystroke rather than trying to use uh, all the keys on the Braille keyboard. One example might be space Z. It's a very common function, but for a one-handed user is really difficult to type. But if you had something like this where you could program that to a single key, that could augment their use and make their use of the Braille Sense more efficient. Well, this is awesome. You can connect all of this great stuff, but what happens if you want to connect a lot of it at one time? Well, we do have three USB host ports, but you can actually do more than that. With several USB hubs. We have tested so many types and shapes and sizes like this anchor one, which has a USB ethernet port on the end and HDMI and everything works with that. That's great. We also have this really fun vintage model that you probably can't even get anymore, but I just had to show it because it's so weird. Uh, it's four USB ports, but they're all, it's kind of like this octagonal plastic weird thing. But anyway, it's cool. And it does work. Uh, here is a more common type that has uh, USB and HDMI. We have this little cool one, which is another cheap model. This one actually came from China and came with a laptop that I have. And it has three USB ports and two SD card readers, um, a full size and a micro. And it will see all the devices at once. And let's see, let's end with this one. Now this one has a ton of stuff plugged into it. I have four USB devices, actually it's two card readers and two USB drives plus HDMI. And we're actually gonna plug this one in so that you can actually see that this really works. So I'm going to connect it to the front USB-C port, and we're just going to wait a moment because it does actually take it a minute. There's one, there's two, there's three, and the fourth one tends to take a little bit longer. And I hope that we are also now, oh, there's number four, and you should now also be seeing the screen of the Braille Sense. And to prove that these are all connected, I'm going to press enter on the file manager. Flash disk one six list item. And it says flash disk one six. And we have flash disk and Google Drive. And all four of those devices were detected and are um, viewable in the file manager. And of course, you can also use them, copy to and from, et cetera, et cetera. So it doesn't necessarily have to be all USB drives. As I said, we do have HDMI connected here also. You're generally going to probably max out at five or six devices, but that's still quite a lot of peripherals. And remember, too, I also have my USB mixer connected on top of all of these things in the hub. So this is pretty darn fabulous. This is really, it's very possible for this to be the center of your workstation. And I'm going to go ahead and stop it right there um, because that's pretty much the end of it. So <laughs> I think we will take a break now and take some of your questions if Carl and Stuart want to take over for a minute. Thanks, yeah. Jenny. Uh, that was, wow, fantastic. It's oh awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, do we have any raised hands, Carl? Not at the moment, but I've got a couple of questions. Okay. Um, right. First of all, remote support. Is, is there something like TeamViewer or something that we can pre-install so team viewer quick support uh does work it worked on the polaris as well although you yeah. didn't have control um to be honest i i haven't checked it yet and i keep, that's on my list of things to do <laughs> because i want to think it actually might work for remote actually uh, for remote control at this point but i actually haven't checked it yet i'm so sorry i will do that very soon because that is something that we are um concerned about and uh, is something that's on our radar. We actually had been working on a mirroring application of our own for Polaris that you were actually able to even remote control one Polaris with another. Um, we never quite got that finished, but if we could sort of revisit that, that would be awesome as well. But that's sort of something that's that's at least on our drawing board and has gotten a little bit further than that actually. So um, I think that that will be possible, yes. Um, but as far as team viewer specifically, I'm not sure if you have, um, I know you have remote mirroring support. I'm not sure if you have control yet. 
Well, that's brilliant. That's enough. I'm sure it will be working because I know it's it's there on. You can pretty much put it on any any Android phone now to take control, right. can't you? So yeah, I think with Android 10, yeah, that that's going to be just sort of as you said, ingrained. It's a standard thing, I think, isn't it? Um, yeah. Right, that's that. Brian, um, Stuart, I think you got the same email as I did from James with regards to pricing. Yes. I just asked him and got it. Do you want me to just run through it? If you don't mind, because you're the, you're the pricing guru. Right. Um, so the RRP, I'm going to give you it in euros and sterling. So the RRP is going to be the same as what the Polaris was at 4,395 sterling. And that's 4,966 euro. The upgrade cost is going to be £999, and these are for only for units purchased in 2021, I have to let you know. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to arrange a pricing for older units, um, but at the minute they're saying just for 2021, so that may be something that we have to take up with Salvas um, at a later time. Yeah, and this is the um, upgrade is where the Braille cells will be moved, Jenny, isn't that correct, into, into the new machine from your Polaris? Yes, and unfortunately, I am not a salesperson, so I can't speak to what's going on with sight and sound in that regard, but uh, that is something that we are trying to work with, yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out about how, how far back we can take the units. Um, because to be fair, they haven't exactly changed a lot over the last since they've been released. So maybe maybe there is movement for older units anyway. Um, the euro price for that upgrade is one thousand one hundred and twenty eight ninety. I'll say so. Let's just call it one thousand one hundred twenty nine euro, just to round it up. Um, so that's that's what we're doing at the minute. Um, hang on, let's just a second. That app you mentioned, Jenny, um, is that iPhone compatible as well? Which app? The mirroring app. Oh, right now it's just Android. Unfortunately, sorry about that. But it does work with, um, and we've tried it with Galaxy phones and tablets. We've tried it with Kindle. Um, Kindle is, I we really want to try to get it to work with Amazon Fire tablets because they're very cheap. They're also small to carry around. And so there is that. Um, there are other mirror applications, one that I've tried with the PC and Stuart still, he said he didn't have it, couldn't install it, but I'm not sure how I did, but there is uh, something called Let's View that works really well via Wi-Fi um, to a, a Windows PC or Windows tablet as well. So there are quite a few options that you can probably do, but unfortunately, no, we we haven't created a direct mirror for iPhone. Sorry about that. Okay, no, that's fine. It's, it's I guess because it's it's kind of like the mirror cast thing, isn't it? Which is an Android. Yeah. An Android um, platform anyway. So yeah, fun, yeah, yeah, Chromecast. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's 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 based completely around an Android system, but that's fine. Um, Another question, um, one from Chris. Can Google Drive chat and meet be installed? Uh, Google Meet, yes. Uh, Google Chat. What is I have I think Google I think chat. I think chat might be what is what used to be Hangouts, if I'm not mistaken, or is that all now well, encompassed into Google Duo. Meet? There's, there's Duo. So, yeah. yeah um, <laughs> so I'm not entirely sure what Google Chat is. Um, I've used Google Duo and Google Meet, and they work very well. Yes, Google Drive. Uh, uh, it will come on it. It's a stock part of Android, so that will actually come on the device. And then once you've signed into Google Drive, you can do this, um, and you can access it directly from our file manager, as I showed on the video. So it appears as a drive, just like your flash disk and any SD card or USB drive that's connected, which is really great, especially if you are using Google Classroom, because, and I, I also, that also appeared um, when I opened my Google Drive, the first folder there was Classroom. So what that allows you to do, if your teachers post these um, in a certain way, you're actually able to access your assignments directly from our word processor or notepad, or if you need to watch a video, you can access them directly from our file manager, which is super useful. Um, and you can save things back to Google Drive the same way. Um, so when you save a document that you've edited and then uh, it automatically uploads to Google Drive and creates a new copy. So this is, again, if um, you've sort of 
might have to talk to your teachers a little bit because it does require a specific way to um, post the assignments, but it really makes it easier because you can in many ways bypass the classroom app, which we can use, there's no problem. Uh, it's just very busy. And it's sometimes really difficult to find your way around it because there's just so much in it. Uh, but anyway, I'm rambling, so go ahead. No, no it's, a good, it's a good point. And just to say that some of the students that I have supported lately with Google Classroom have found, Jenny, that uh, solution that you talk about to be ideal where they're doing everything through Drive. Cool. Great. Uh, which is good. Um, Kyle, can, I, can I put a few email questions in? Is that possible? I'll let you, yes. Come on. on. <laughs> For a, few, a few really quick ones. So we've one from uh, Samuel Wilkins who says... Um, I have a quick question I would like to submit. Uh, is it possible to connect a Bluetooth QWERTY keyboard to the Braille Sense and use that? So he says there are times oh, I would like to be able to type as opposed to not Braille. Oh yes, absolutely. Um, you know, this is this is generally an Android. You know, I didn't even talk about Bluetooth in the video, and we're probably going to have to update it for release because the other thing I did not mention, you can also connect things like a Fitbit or a smartwatch. Um, but certainly, yes, um, a Bluetooth keyboard, Bluetooth headsets, absolutely. Um, I have this really fabulous, I'm a gadget junkie. So I have this really fabulous tri-folding keyboard. Actually, I saw this when I was in London at Site Village and ordered it from Amazon, but it is a USB and Bluetooth combination. You can use it either way and it will connect up to up to three devices and it's foldable and it's very cool. It's called iClever. So, and it has like a, a nice aluminum outside. So I highly recommend that one. Okay, that's <laughs> good. Yes, it'll connect. Thank you. Um, Fiona, I have an email from Fiona. He says, a little while back, my bro they offered to switch, I think she's talking about BT, my broadband to a newer, faster, uh, faster connection, which was not compatible with my Braille Sense at the time. Um, will the new Braille Sense work with the more up-to-date systems? And I know I have a 5G option on my wireless network, and I think it'll connect to that. So... Yeah, and Stuart mentioned this earlier. I actually think it'll work on the Polaris, but there's a, a setting that you need to change. Um, the there, I, I cannot remember, and I don't have a Polaris in front of me right this very second. I'm not sure if it, I think it is in our options. I'm very sure that it is. So if you go to set up internet um, and then go to options, there's an option to search for 5G only. And I believe if you do that, then you'll be able to find it and connect to it. Okay. Um, on the Polaris as well as the, and the BS6, of course, it just works. Uh, we got another question from Andrea Gordon, and I suppose she's just talking about uh, other, let's say, um, other note takers in the in this in this space, and she would just like to talk a little bit. Or Jenny, could you comment about the the how well it performs maybe on the web when doing things that are that will require connectivity, maybe browsing websites? Um, is it pretty? Is it pretty? Is it pretty robust? I suppose. It's definitely a lot snappier than any note taker I've ever used. There are always going to be challenges with the web. You know, this is the case even with JAWS, trying to keep up with all the new standards. It's, it's just, you know, I recently put something out on Twitter about assistive technology. You know, the fact is for it to assist, the technology has to exist first. And so there's always this little bit of a lag. And I think that's especially true for the web. So I wouldn't say that you won't have any challenges at all, but I have definitely found it to be a lot snappier. Uh, everything that was happening, I did several things where I was actually working from the internet. Um, you know, I played the, the file from Google Drive. Um, I, what else did I do? I got into Zoom and it was reacting snappily, you know, much, much faster even than on the Polaris. Uh, I, you know, so I, th I think that you're gonna find this to be a much improved experience all around, yes. Okay, brilliant. And last two email questions, and then I'll hand back to Carl. And this is from Jeff Bastian. Um, and he says, uh, he has two questions. Will there be um, an 18 cell version of the Braille Sense 6? And will it be able to interface with an Index Basic 3, Index Basic D V3 embosser? There will not be an 18 cell no. <laughs> Braille Sense, oh. but there will oh be a 20. Gosh. No, a, a no, 20. there will be a 20. Yes, oh, wow. the Polaris Mini. So yes, there will be a mini version, but we do 20 cells. We pack 20 cells in there instead of 18. So Brilliant. even better, but they're very, it's still very small. Um, it'll be probably a little, 
but I think it'll be about the same as the Polaris Mini actually, as far as size and, and weight and all that. So yes, it'll be very, um, uh, it'll be very compact. Um, so to your second question, actually we are working on that right now. Um, the Index Basic D, we actually got the developer kit from Index and we are making that happen. So yes, that will be so, so that doesn't necessarily mean it will be the version three though, does it? Because that's been superseded oh, twice now. <clears throat> Yeah, it's an old unit. I know. I think. I, I think even the Polaris struggled with the V3s as well. So I can only guess that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even catch that. Um, I wonder if is does does that have USB though the V3 or, or is that is that the old did. parallel? And yeah. I think it's, that you it's can. The old connector, isn't it? I think. Oh, we used to yeah. support those USB to parallels, um, and I know. Yeah. I know there are some instances where we can send uh, like just a text stream to the embosser. Oh, wow. I am not sure. I know we support V4 and 5. Um, <laughs> I will have to check on that, uh, but I will. I'll check yeah. on that and get back to Sight and Sound. And yeah, um, and we'll you. once I hear Jeff, we'll, we'll come back to you. So, OK, that's all our email questions. Thanks to everyone who got in touch ahead of the event. And we go back to Carl. Right, I'm just going to motor through the questions in the chat. Then we've got six hands raised, so I'll get to them before they all run away. Um, Norman Octon, yes, Sight and Sound will sell this. And with regards to repairs, as long as it's not motherboard issues, <laughs> Sight and Sound repair everything here. Our, our tech support boys are out of this world, and and they're all all trained by those lovely guys over at Selvus. And they rip anything apart and put it back together as it came apart as well, which is pretty impressive. So I hope that, I hope that answers your question. Um, Debbie's just asked, it's just a quick one for you, Jenny. What was the name of that gadget with the four XL, XLR used with Zoom? Oh, the PodTrack P4. It's kind of new. It's, uh, it's really kind of that cool. sounds quite cool, doesn't it? Right, um, we're just going to move on to my... Lovely friend David Halliwell. Um, does the unit switch on faster than the Polaris? I would reboot and show you, but it would kick me off of Zoom, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> the processor and everything's yeah. been increased massively, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. So you'd yeah. like to say that the, the startup time has got to have been um been worked yeah, on it's, that way. It is much faster. Yeah. Um, how about the battery capacity? Um, it's going to be about the same as far as your battery life goes. It's a little more efficient. So the battery capacity is slightly lower, but it's also more power efficient. So we haven't actually finished our, our complete tests on that, but my, um, what was I doing? I was connected to zoom at CSUN and it was like three hours later and I had all these devices connected and I wasn't connected to power. And I think I still had like 56, no, it was more than that. It was, it was about 65%, I think, but I was doing a lot. I mean, I was really powerhousing it. I was connected to the internet and I had a mixer and all this and a webcam and all this stuff connected. You don't, if you don't have all that stuff connected, you're going to get a really, really long battery life. I think it's going to probably be similar to what the Polaris is. So probably near to something like 17 or 18 hours, but we haven't actually tested it. So I don't know. But obviously with the efficiency as again, with all the new processes and stuff that should save on battery life. And yeah, and a lot of this is going to be dependent on what you're doing, because this can do a lot more, you know, as I said, if you've got all your peripherals connected and you're connecting to the internet and you're streaming audio and doing all this stuff, um, you know, it could, it's, it's definitely going to make a difference. Whereas if you are not powering three other devices, you know, obviously you're going to have a lot more battery life. So that's just, brilliant. Um, David's final question. I'll answer this one. Um, we are supposed to be getting them in June. I know our demo units are on route, and I also know someone's already got theirs, <coughs> Stuart. Um, so, yes. Stuart we, we, is our valued beta tester, yeah, so you, you know we, that you thank have. Thank you, Jenny. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. Stop no, no, but about. you know that Sight and Sound is involved in, in the development and stuff yeah. right now. So yeah, and, and, and we are testing stuff, I suppose, that's kind of local to this, to this region, let's say. Yeah. yeah. No, that's brilliant. Yeah, so um, David, your answer is we're hoping to have the models ready to ship at some point in June. 
Um, right, next quick one. Carla Savage has asked, would this work with MS Teams in a work environment? It Again, it should, and it should actually work a lot better than Polaris does. Um, yeah, I don't use Teams much. Um, we, we do need to try that, but we did. Um, again, I've, I've tried it on Polaris and I've attended Teams live events. It's brilliant with that, but that's, that's also a smaller platform. Um, this, again, the Polaris could work with Teams, but it, there would be some lag and some slowdown and you're just not gonna have that with the BrailleSense 6. So uh, I very much think that shouldn't be a problem. That's Brilliant. certain, Thank and it's, it's something I have not uh, tested yet, and we do use Teams in Sight and Sound, so I'll have a look at that. Uh, it was, yeah, there was a bit of lag, as Jenny says, on Polaris, but I would expect it to be a lot better. Brilliant. Um, last question um, from the chat box. Can the web browser support web-based apps such as Salesforce? That's a nice I... one for you. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so I, I sort of want to say, so, okay, so what we have found is that, um, you know, things do open. There's all this connection. Um, for example, if we open a link in email that needs to go to Zoom, it'll, it will automatically do that. Um, so when these things are connected, it seems to work. Of course, you know, this is the problem. We can't test every app. So have I tested Salesforce specifically? I have not, but you know what? I think Hims Inc. uses that. So that's something that again, I can, I can make them try for me uh, because I don't have access to it. Um, theoretically it should, but I don't want to promise something that I haven't tested. It might be also worth saying, Jenny, I used to use Salesforce in a previous uh, working life, and it does have an app. Uh, and I, I know yes. at the time, some of my colleagues found the app on a mobile platform to be a lot easier to use. So yeah. yes. it may be worth trying the Android Salesforce app to see if that works. I would say yes. And I do know that they did try that on Polaris. And again, it was a little bit sluggish, which that is, I think is probably one of the biggest things that I am happy about is that third party apps, uh, they just seem to, they respond instantly. Whereas they, on Polaris, there is a little bit of lag in those and you just don't see it. It just makes the whole experience feel smoother. Everything's more efficient and quicker. And especially when you're using first letter nav, you can just jump to things and um, it's just, really nice you know even when I was in YouTube there and I wasn't sure what to do um and I needed to go to hide controls I just pressed the letter h and boom you know I was there yeah. so that I think is just the one of the biggest improvements is um everything is just instant excellent um Mark Mark Higgins has just said something he says he, he uses Salesforce as a senior manager in higher education and it does work very well with the standard html um these days so it should work so um we're getting someone i believe that's using it telling us that it should work without issue so that's good enough for me great brilliant to hear that right let's start with some hands then mike brace you're up first you've just muted just, yourself that's it I just need to Hi, Mike. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, mine's a very basic one, uh, Jenny. Um, does it have the, the full diary facility independently? And more importantly, will it also then connect with your diary on your laptop or on your calendar or on an iPhone? And will it, oh, sync, yes. them? Will it sync them? Uh, you mean with Google Calendar? We, we, well, oh. if you've if you're using a laptop where you're getting invites for meetings, et cetera, on, on your, through your computer, and then I plug in my diary facility on, the, uh, on this device, will it actually sync the two together? Um, do you know which specific, like, are you talking about an Outlook calendar, Google calendar? Well, I, I mean, think, I guess. Yeah, Outlook calendar. Okay, um, well, the answer is going to be yes, either way. Um, so the way that this works is anything that will synchronize with an Android calendar will uh, sync up, especially if you have it connected. The interesting thing is, um, so we support exchange email, but we don't support exchange uh, contacts and calendar, but you can do it. Um, and there's just a tiny little workaround that's not really difficult. And that is to install something like Outlook for Android and set up your account. And seriously, that's it. You don't have to do anything else. It will automatically come into the Polaris calendar as long as you have it the, um, in your account settings, you have it uh, turned on, you have 
sync turned on, it will um, automatically sync with your, your, and you'll get appointments or sorry, you'll get alarms for your appointments. And I remember I discovered this on Polaris and I was really surprised because I'd done that. I was testing um, some email app and all of a sudden I had this, my alarm was going off for this appointment that was on my Selvis calendar. I'm like, wait, how did that happen? Um, so I didn't have to do anything. That's the point. So even if you don't use Outlook for Android, just installing it and setting up your account is enough. Um, it'll yeah. automatically bring it all in. So. And that would work with the calendar on, on iPhone if you do download that, because that's obviously iOS, not Android. Um, if your iOS is syncing with your Google Calendar or some other Android calendar or your Outlook calendar, it'll all sync up. Anything that's syncing automatically with your Google, that's the easiest way to deal with it, is to sync ev everything with your Google Calendar, then you don't have to do anything. It just automatically comes in. There's nothing you have to do at all because uh, the Braille Sense will automatically take everything from your Google Calendar and bring it into the Schedule Manager. Brilliant. All right. Thanks for that, Mike. No, I'm simply Samuel Wilkins, if you could unmute yourself, please. Are you now unmuted? Yes. Um, thank you. Um, I, I've got a couple of questions. Is it possible to connect a network to connect up to a network printer with the pol with the Braille Sense Six? Because I've worked in some schools where I do some peripatetic teaching on the Braille Sense. And one of the questions I had was, is it possible to connect to a network printer? Because unfortunately, the there is no documentation, well, not as far as I could see, on Android system settings. And I was a bit nervous about messing with those. And the other question is, I know what you said, Carl. You answered my question I previously had, was about to have about uh, the upgrades. Will we, how will we know if that, if it is possible? Because I know you said at the moment, that it will only be that the upgrades will only be for 2021 units. How can we be notified if the situation changes? The the easiest route for that would be um, to give us a call in June when when we do the release. We are going to be sending out a shed load of mail shots, um, letting people know anyway. So you are going to be. Um, told when it when it's due for release and the exact date and pre-order dates and everything else. So hopefully at that point um, we'll have some more clarity on on the, exactly what we can do with regards to how old they're going to go back to upgrade the versions. So about the network printers. Um, yeah, uh, again, this is sort of going to depend on your situation. So you actually do need to go into Android settings. You are right, because the way that this works is that the in the word processor, when you choose print, it's going to use whatever the default printer is in Android settings. So yes, you actually do want to connect to your printer that way. Uh, if it has an app or there's, a, there's an app called Hammer Print that I like just because it supports just about everything. Um, and sometimes you can get things connected easier. But um, yeah, once you are connected to the network printer and it is set as your default printer in Android settings, the word processor will automatically use that. Right, it, thank you very much. It's because there's no documentation on the, on the Polaris about how to, con how to do these things on the Android settings. And I was a bit nervous about messing with them. Oh, sure. Um, well, you, you probably won't hurt anything. <laughs> you can always undo it. There's this little awesome thing that says reset, reset app preferences. If you ever get into any trouble and it's doing something you don't want, just do that. It'll change all your Android app preferences back. It won't erase anything and it will undo anything that you don't like. So no problem. Brilliant. Thank you, Jenny. All right, let's move on to the next one. Oh, my goodness, what am I doing? <laughs> Anna Louise Smith, it's it's down to you now, please, if you can unmute yourself. Can everyone yeah, hear me? We can, yeah, Anna. How are you? Right. Um, I'm going to try and say this as nicely as possible, so please <gasps> don't please don't upset me. This business of um, the upgrading to the new units, I bought my Polaris probably about this time last year, in a deal, I need to probably talk to you properly, Carl, 
Um, yeah. I'll give you a ring later on this afternoon. Um, I put it as a deal. I I and I appreciate Carl, you went in your position last year. Um, I suspect one of the reasons you possibly were doing the deal was because you were hoping that the new Sense Six was coming out, and you didn't want want to get left with machines. Um, but because of the pandemic, we've had a big delay in the Sense Six coming out. So I think my message, I'm hoping it gives sight and sound something to work with. But also I would say to him, I think because of this pandemic, there are people like myself who um, are, are potentially really going to lose out badly if they only do the 21 um, and possibly had their machine come out when it should have done and we hadn't had this pandemic, they would have then got an upgrade because I suspect that's what would have happened with me. Had it come out last year, I would have been able to get an upgrade. So I would just say, you know, just for the goodwill of your customers, that perhaps it would be really good if you could do the upgrade for those that bought their machine in the pandemic. We'll, 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 we'll find out anyway, Anna Louise. Um, the thing is with it is, it's, it's like I say, I literally got handed this information while we were on air. I asked for yeah, the, for the fine, info. Carl. That's and, really fine, and, oh. and Selvis are still selling the BrailleSense Polaris. They've not taken it off the market, as are we. Yeah. We, we still have stock of them. We're still right. selling them now. So um, it, it's not something that's been um, replaced. It hasn't it, been it, set in stone. It's, yeah, it's it hasn't basically. been replaced yet, and it's not been set in stone. It's basically and a it, whole new unit, so that's yeah, why I think they changed I the name. Honest, I would have upgraded. In fact, I talked to Stuart about upgrading because, you know, as I said, it's a little bit like a car. If you keep up to date, you can keep the costs down. But, um, yeah, I'll probably talk to you properly later on, Carl, because there is another issue that I need to discuss with you. Yeah, no, um, that's but, fine. Bear in mind as well, for people, and this is absolutely nobody's fault. It's the pandemic. It's happened. I mean, I've had very little use of my Polaris in the last year because I've not been able to have, well, we have done the training on Zoom. We, we eventually did the Zooming on Zoom, me and Stuart. But even so, we're saving back sessions for face-to-face. -face. So I've had limited use as well. But I will talk to you properly about it, Carl. Yeah, we'll um, we'll have a chat. To, not a problem. I don't need to come over as as um. It's no, a it's, a gen, it's a genuine question. It's, it's, it's yeah. It's 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 what we expect, and it's like I say. I literally just read that email where it's no, saying it's who purchased. Yeah. So I mean, that doesn't mean it's it's gonna that's set in stone that that's gonna happen. Yeah. Because I'm gonna fight the case for everyone anyway. Yeah, because I, mean, I do think it would be fair if they did it for everyone that bought the bought the the, the thing in bought the Polaris in the, um, <coughs> sorry, bought it in the pandemic because things have gone all over the place in the pandemic. No, know? definitely, definitely. Um, and so I'll probably give you a ring later on this afternoon, Carl, and we can discuss yeah, we'll have it. Yeah, we'll have a chat, definitely. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. Anna. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye-bye. Thanks, Anna. Right. Um, Caroline, it is you. If you could just unmute yourself, please. Hi. Uh, well, just a couple of things. First off, uh, just the bird is. Sorry. winner of our quiz, by the way, as well. Winner of the Christmas quiz. Oh, we have the Techno Lab. <laughs> yeah. Winner yeah. Of our quiz. He's from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just a quick comment. First of all, I actually do have a program that syncs my Outlook calendar with my uh, Google Calendar both ways on the computer. So there is a way to do that. And then of course it all syncs with my Polaris at the moment. But what I'm wondering is for those of us that are techno geeks, um, Jenny, is there going to be a list, even though I know it would not be exhausted by any means, of all these little gadgets and gizmos that you've been talking yeah. about? <laughs> we have already talked about that, and I actually discussed that with my boss last week, that we need to add this. Um, and I told him that I would collect it and, 
and compile it. Um, but there will be two things actually that, that I think that we have to do. I did an accessible apps list for Polaris, but I think we need to update that. And I think it's going to be more useful and utilized with the Braille Sense 6 just because it's so smooth with um, yeah. Android apps. So we will do both an accessible apps list and a compatible accessories list, which with which will have links to the products and awesome. all of that. And we'll do the different categories and all of that. So perfect. Yes. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Caroline. Um, um, Lenita, if you could unmute yourself, please. Yeah. Um, I want to, I, I might've missed this. The, the dimensions of the, uh, Brosen six, uh, centimeters, long wide high uh i don't <laughs> i don't know them exactly if you've seen the polaris they are the same no, not, i've got to, i've got a, a, a u2 mini so i don't know how that com it's obviously slightly bigger than that is it it's narrower it's thinner right yeah it's but it thinner. is bigger you're probably looking let me just guesstimate um you're looking at about 20 centimeters high mm -hmm. about 20 I'm guessing now. I'm, I've got my fingers out now, trying to work this out. <laughs> About twenty-eight centimeters wide, right. and and not far off, just short of an inch deep. Right. So um, it's in comparison to what the Brow Sense U2 and U2 Mini were, mm -hmm. it's sleek and streamlined, and it they feel so nice in your hands. Right. And then the, the next question is, when will the Braille Sense 6 Mini be ready? I mean, you are obviously working on Right. Uh, we think it's probably going to be in the fall. Right. So it's We've... not, it's actually not going to be like another year. It'll be uh, probably three or four months behind the 32. Okay. We, we've got a, a little assistant on from America, Thomas Simpson's on the oh, chat. Yeah, he's, got, he's got the measurement. So it's 24 and a half centimeters long. Mm -hmm. 14 and a half deep and 22 and 2.2 centimeters so about an inch thick i weren't far off right oh, well done you know it was and, and then the last question sorry uh and i'm not a techno geek i'm i'm very far behind with everything um but but could you connect the browser 6 to an iphone i mean in other words use it as a as a term as a braille terminal yeah. yeah absolutely all our products do that Right. Thank you very much. And it weighs 695 grams. Thanks, Thomas. You're a star. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's 705. It turned out to be <gasps> 10 grams more oh, than no. me. Oh, no. Thomas, you've so let me down. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it is 705 Thank grams. You very it's much. still 45 grams lighter than the Polaris, but it's, that's what it is. Thank you. And, Thank it you is great, and it is great to have Thomas here. So welcome, Thomas, to, uh, to Webinar Wednesday. He's, he's profusely apologized. I'll let him off. <laughs> I, I did actually <laughs> I did actually put a webinar Wednesday advert on the Browse Sense users page on um, uh, Facebook good. last night, you see. So I was hoping we'd um we'd get some Thomas won't get a discount, Chris. Thomas <laughs> works for Selvers. <laughs> he gets his for nothing. <laughs> he 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 he's the freebie. So if you if you want anything, tap him up. No, I'm joking. Right. Um Fiona Gamerson, we've got three hands left and then we can Move on, Fiona. If you could just unmute yourself, please. I'll start doing the countdown. Countdown. Do do. Oh, there we go. Um, I have a Polaris, and I am never able to to follow the links. I have to. The links have come up as as text. Um, so I. I have an iPod touch, which I use with the Polaris. So I always have to go into the iPod to follow any links that I might be, uh, might be sent in emails. You I mean take from email? Yeah. Yeah. Or, well, from anything. I mean, if I'm reading a web, a web page, uh, I, I, I never use my Polaris really for the internet now because the iPod is so much quicker. And I take it that, that, that these problems are uh, I think of the past with the Braille with the Braille Sense Six. Uh, they are, but you should be able to do this on your Polaris as well. Um, and you may have to get in touch with Stuart uh, and figure out why that's not working for you because it should. Um, the other thing we might want to make sure is: are, are you upgraded? Are you running the newest version of the Polaris? I don't the know. Firmware? I'm not a geek. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm the one that I'm the one that asked the question about the um, internet connection because when they were upgrading my, um, you know, BT came around and said you can now have, um, you know, faster broadband. I said, well, I, I'd like it, but you have to make sure it works with my my machine, and it didn't. So I I I've, I've have the old fashioned broadband here. And next door, where my father-in-law lives, I got the newer one, newer broadband, and I can't use my Polaris there. I can only use my iPod. Um, Fiona, if you I want to get in touch Fiona. with me after the session, and okay, we'll fine. can we arrange a call and try to work out what might be going on? Help, even okay. help make sure you get we get we get your own. I, that, that'd be great because I, I I would like to be able to use it for for web pages and things, but I I just can seldom ever open them, so. Uh, it's obviously my problem. <laughs> Thank no, you. Just just drop me an email afterwards and we'll sort it okay. out. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you, Fiona. Um, let me just lower hand. Jeff Baston, if you could unmute yourself, please. Can you hear me? We've got you. Hi, yep. Jeff. Yep. Hi there. Good afternoon. Um, I'm sure lots of people that want to know this one, Jenny. Clearly, at four and a half grand, these devices are not cheap. So we're now on Android 10. Is there an upgrade policy? Are you going to replace the motherboards every so often if that's the solution? Give us a handle on upgrade policy, please. Sure. Um, so, yes, we, we had hoped to be able to upgrade the Polaris. And as you know, that did not happen. Um, we are actually locked into an upgrade plan. So we will be upgrading the OS and it will not require a hardware upgrade. Uh, it will probably happen in 2022 or 2023. Uh, so you will see that and it won't be, uh, it'll be a jump. I mean, we'll, we'll skip to whatever's current at the time. So, um, yes, there will be at least, at least one. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that we've fully, uh, locked this in place, but we have locked it in with our, our board maker and the, the people that we've worked with to create our platform. So it's something that we definitely know will be supported and, and it is in our plan. Excellent. Brilliant. No, no, that's gone. <laughs> I'm not hanging around. Um, right. Anna Louise. Oh. Anna. I'm here. I'm here. I'm still with you. Um, to the person who was talking about the Facebook page, I can't remember his name. That was me. That was Carl. That was you, Carl. Um, I I tried to get onto the page. Are you in charge of it now, Carl? Um, you might need to speak to Thomas. Ah, oh, Thomas. I yeah. was trying to get on the page a couple of weeks ago and couldn't get onto it. Couldn't find it, couldn't get onto it. Um, so could I how do you get onto it? It's just under Braille Sense Users. Okay, Braille Sense Users. Okay, I'll try that again. Have a um, look, yeah, because um, Thomas is your man. Thomas, Thomas is the is the mod. He's he's in charge of the page. Okay. It's, it's his, I right. believe. Thomas, so. then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And finally, this is a, a question that me and Stuart came across a couple of weeks ago. I say this to Jenny. Jenny, how do you is how do you do word count on the on the Polaris? Oh, um, when you're in the word processor or Notepad, press space one five six. Uh, yes, I one, that is. Five, six. Yeah, Space so what one, that's going to, like, where am I? It's a WH sign, like, where, where? Um, so if you can remember that, that'll help you remember it. So what that's going to give you, though, it's going to give you page. Uh, it's going to be, like, line, page, paragraph. Uh, then it'll give you word. Like, it'll say um, 2,356 of 5,068. So it's going to give you like that. And there's also then a character in space count. Both of these are in the read menu, yes. In the read <laughs> menu. So I have to get to the read menu, do I? Well, uh, you don't have to. Just use the shortcut you, if you want. Yeah. But if you yeah. forget, that's where they're located. Okay, if you, right. If you forget but what the shortcut is, they're in the read menu. Six. Okay. Yep. Thank you ever so much, Jenny. That's really helpful. Um, I'm. I know I'm hoping to go back to uni in September, and I know... And I write for a newsletter as well. And I know that you, you have to watch this, the word count. So that's really helpful. Thank oh, you. Are, you. are you thinking about getting your new Braille Sense through the DSA then, Anna? Um, no, I've got my Polaris already because I got it a year ago. So I've just, I, 
I've said, and I hope everybody's not too annoyed about that. Um, and I will be claiming disabled students allowance. Yes, if I get a space at college and we can work out how to pay for it. Yes, I will be claiming that. If you do go through DSA, here's just a little thing for you. We actually have um, a part of an assessment centre group as well. So if you need any assistance with that, just let us know. I certainly will, but I'll talk to you properly later anyway, Carl. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your help, everybody. No problem. Thanks, Anna. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Ever the salesman. Of course. Get, Never I miss a chance. I can't <laughs> get it out of my system. <laughs> right. Um, sorry about that. I can't help it. It's bred into me. Um, next one, Fritz. If you could unmute yourself, please. Fritz Bizarre. Oh, Fritz. Yeah. Can you can you hear me? We yeah, we've you, got yeah. you. Okay, excellent. Um, I just have a question with regards to the Braille Sense Six compatibility with um, social media platforms like uh, Facebook and Twitter. Um, is it is it extremely oh, so um, much and, better? <laughs> is it extremely compatible? Um, I I I wouldn't. You know, some of those sites are are not very fun, but the one that I found huge improvements with um, is Facebook. Facebook on yeah. the Polaris is just not very fun. Um, I like it so much on the Braille Sense 6. And the one very cool thing that I um, discovered is that you get image descriptions because we're now in Android 10. And so they're automatic. It's so neat. Um, I oh, never wow. realized how much I was missing. So, um, Oh, wow. That's quite impressive. <laughs> so I think one of the big things that I had, you know, again, it's very sluggish and, and Facebook still is because it's sort of switching. Well, I wouldn't say it's very, but um, it's switching pages, but you are able to do so much more now with it. It's, it's really great. Um, and Twitter is the same way. It's, you know, I still prefer, and I, I very much hope that um, Natic updates their MoTweet app because <laughs> I still prefer that. Um, but you can use the Android Twitter app and it's definitely better than it was on the Polaris. Um, you Just a lot of it is Android 10 and the upgraded web view accessibility and, and various things. So it's not even totally down to us. A lot of it is just the newer OS. So it does work much better. Um, again, there's still, I always prefer the note taker interfaces when we can get it, especially in social networking apps, because again, they're just very busy. There's a lot going on um, and there's a lot of different columns and stuff a lot of times, but it does work a lot better. It's a lot more doable. It's also about speed, I think, Jenny. It's about how quickly yeah. you want to get information. Yeah. But just on that note, I know somebody, and I have not used this personally, but I had a few people tell me with in relation to Polaris that tweetings for Android was a, a kind of a favorite, I think. So it might be one yeah. worth checking out. Yeah. Okay. It, it does have a lot. The thing about tweeting is to know, first of all, you do have to pay for it, um, but it is worth it if you're a Twitter user. And the other thing to know, it even has accessibility settings and it's a mainstream app. Um, you can really customize your view and you definitely want to do that because there's a lot of stuff. If you take it out and get it out of the way, it makes things a lot easier. So just kind of be aware of that. Yeah. And sorry, just quickly while, while, we're, while we're at it, is it possible? Is it, are there any plans to make the Braille Sense 6 more accessible or more compatible with iPhone-based apps like the iOS? I'm not sure if I understand what you mean. It's running Android, so it's not going to run iPhone apps. Um, you know, some apps are cross-platform in that they are supported by both OSs, but yeah. we can't we can't actually run iPhone applications. You can, of course, use it as a Braille display with your iPhone um, yeah. and deal with it that way. Okay, okay. Brilliant. Thank, Thank you, Fritz. Fritz. Thanks, Fritz. Thanks, Brilliant. Carl. Thanks. Um, next, we have David Wilkins. Good afternoon, David. Uh, hi. Can you guys hear me or am I still muted? No, we can hear you now. Pardon? We can hear you. Oh, okay, great. Okay. My question is, one, one problem I've had with every browser sense model is when I've tried to note take in a meeting, I think I must be typing too fast or trying to type in too much. Uh, the entire thing slows right down. Although it's coming up, the Braille line is taking a long time to catch up with what I've typed. And while it's doing that, it won't respond to anything I do with the computer unless I turn it off and turn it back on. Um, does the Braille Sense 6 have a similar problem? 
You mean typing directly in the Braille Sense 6 or you, you yes, mentioned the I computer? Do. Yes, I do. Oh, okay. Yes, I do. I don't think you're going to be able to out type this one. Um, that is one thing that we we did know was sort of an issue with the Polaris for some users and the keyboard also is a lot harder to touch. Um, this one, I can't out type it. I haven't yet. Um, it's it's fabulous. I love the new keyboard, even on the 32. And I usually don't like the 32 cell models. I prefer the mini models with the smaller keys. And even with the 32, I have just, I've been using it like gangbusters and I, I love it. So I do think that's a serious improvement to this one. The whole keyboard mechanism is different. Um, and it has a different feel, a different uh, travel. It, it's just completely entirely redone. Uh, is that the same with the um, Braille six stop keyboard or are we talking about a QWERTY keyboard? No, no, this is, I'm talking about the Braille Sense 6, the, the internal keyboard that's on it. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you, David. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, swiftly on to the next one. Nicholas Sanders, if you could just unmute yourself, please. There we Hello, go. can you hear me? Hi, Nicola. Hi, hi there. Um, excellent webinar, really interesting. Um, I have a couple of related questions. Um, the first question is about um, multiple open files on the Polaris and presumably the Braille Sense 6 as well in the notepad and or the word processor. Um, I know that you can have, I think it's probably up to 10 files um, open in either of those. But what the problem that I find is that the only way to navigate between those is using tab and shift tab. So if mm -hmm. I have, say, 10 files open, I don't seem to have any quick, efficient way of getting to file number five or six in that list. So it would be great if there could be a list of open files. And also, um, if I move from one open file to another, it seems that you have to save the changes or lose those changes so it, it makes me wonder to what extent are those files really open because it seems to take as much time for them to load as it does if you access them from scratch from the file manager and uh, right. just a real sorry uh, just a, right. a related question to that, um, Jenny, I know in one of your recent excellent webinars, you mentioned in response to somebody's question about having an extra instance of the notepad or word processor mm -hmm. open, um, you said that there was a, that, that would be possible. I mean, I would certainly love that myself, but uh, you mentioned a workaround involving opening the help and then opening yeah. another file from within it, and I can't get that to work. And I was wondering really? if there's a trick that I'm missing because the, the open option doesn't seem to be available in the file men menu when I open the help.docs, whatever it is. It's, it's the menu starts with save as rather than the usual file open menu. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, just a second. Oh, it used to work. <laughs> but I can see that it doesn't. Uh, I'm sure we can change that. Yeah, yeah. Even the shortcut right. doesn't. I see this that. would be to open another instance uh, of the word processor. Is that the, the idea? Oh, uh, the notepad actually. Yes, or the, or the, yeah. the notepad. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I will ask about that because that used to actually work and that was a really cool trick that we had. Um, so right now you can use at least the notepad and the word processor. And if you mm -hmm. divide your files between those two, that's going to give you a little bit um, you know, easier time with that. Instead of cycling through 10, you can cycle through like five each. Um, but yeah, we used to have that really cool way. And there's no reason that that couldn't work. Um, because it is just another instance of the notepad. So uh, again, let me check on that and see if we can sort of get that put back in. Oh, that'd, that'd be good. And, and are the files genuinely open because of the fact that you do s seem to have to save um, your changes before moving from one to another, right. whereas on a PC, you wouldn't have to do that. Right, so they're not actually open in separate windows the way that they are on the PC. That is actually why it is almost better to use different programs like the word processor and the notepad and help if you can um, yeah. to do this because you're right, they're, they're actually not. They're um, being closed and reloaded. That's what I thought, yeah. Um, it would be great if there was like a list of open files such as the, the competition note taker I believe has. Um, because I mean, it's, it's true, you can open files in either the word processor or the uh, notepad, but I often need to convert my 
docs files to text because otherwise I can't search the numbering properly in them. So I'm a little bit restricted that way. Okay, I gotcha. Um, that's, that's an interesting thought. We've not ever been asked for that, but it seems like it should be doable. Um, you know, yeah, it just makes things I mean, quicker. I'm not a developer. Yeah, I'm not a developer. So I hate to promise anything, but that would seem to make sense and would seem to be possible. So okay. uh, again, let me check on that too. I, I need to be making a list here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cause I mean, it, it may be that it'll be quicker on the new uh, Braille Sense 6, but for those who may not be able to upgrade, it would still be a, a useful signature that could perhaps be sure. implemented in the Polaris as well. Yeah. Thank you very much anyway, that's great. Sure. And they do actually load, you're, you're right, um, but you would still have to cycle through them. So exactly. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Um, could one, could I sort of interject? <laughs> so I was going to do a second part of the presentation, but given all the questions that there are, I think I'm just going to quickly summarize what I was going to do and not actually do it, um, which is okay. Uh, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about was just a quick overview of the new applications that we do not have in uh, the Polaris. One of them, of course, I mentioned in the, in the video was the dictionary. It is included now. Um, I also pointed out the color reader, the language profiles, and the world clock. We have also recently added a Bookshare download application, which is really slick and very uh, easy to use. It is um, everyone loves our interface, even though there are apps like Go Read and Voice Stream that you can use, um, but our interface is just really slick and, and quick. So we um, are actually working with Stuart right now to make sure that that will support RNIB and Bookshare Ireland. Uh, we also added the web radio function back for those of you who use the U2 and use the web radio function, we've added that back in the media player. Uh, the database manager, I think we brought that back. Um, we have a couple other things still in the works as well, so we're not even quite finished. We'll see what we can get done before release one. Um, but we, this is a very cool balance between all this modern, I showed you all this modern functionality and connectivity, but we also have really brought back a lot of the basics and the favorites, you know, the traditional note taker favorites. And, you know, one of the things that I have felt is with these devices, there's often a compromise. You either are more note takerish or you're more Android-ish. And I think this is probably the first device that I've ever used that really doesn't compromise either way. It lets you do both very, very well. And I, um, I am super excited about this. Um, it is, it's our sixth sense. Someone pointed that out to me. It's, it's the Braille Sense 6. And she said, oh, it's your sixth sense. And I am planning on purchasing uh, my own personal unit and it will be my sixth sense as well. It'll be the sixth device that I've purchased from the company. So very cool. I'm very excited about this personally. It's not just that I'm trying to, to sell you or, or anything. This for me is the kind of device that I've dreamed of for a long time. So anyway, uh, my enthusiasm is completely real and we can return to the questions. Excellent. Thank you very much for that. Um, Mr. Beveridge, it is your turn, sir. Uh, I Hello, think from I am um, yeah. muted. Um, hi, you. folks. Um, I do apologise if I've missed this question because I um, had to drop out due to work commitments. So um, just a quick one for Jenny. Um, does the Braille, Sense Pilar, um, the Braille Sense 6 is, in terms of internet connectivity or network connectivity, is it just Wi-Fi or can you connect this to, say, um, your hotspot on your smartphone as well so that you can use it when you're out and about? So it's gonna support anything that Android does. So of course you could do the Bluetooth tethering if you wanted to do that. Um, the hotspot on your phone is basically gonna be a Wi-Fi connection um, or you know, of course any home Wi-Fi. Um, as I explained earlier, right now I'm using USB-C and uh, via ethernet. Uh, so yeah, I mean, anything that Android's gonna support, it's going to work with. Yeah, brilliant. And just, just one quick one, Jenny, as well. Is there any good GPS apps which work with it when you're out and about, or is that something that still needs to be worked on? You know, there are actually several. Um, there's APH's Nearby Explorer. 
Um, if you're not in America, the only difference is you, you can't download the maps uh, locally. You do have to be connected to something, uh, the internet, of, but it will use Google Maps. Even found me in Korea, and there really aren't a lot of good GPS apps in Korea. So um, I was able to do that. Uh, Lazario is another one that I've heard is really great. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience with that. Uh, there's one in Europe, I think it's called Seeing Assistant Move. There's there's a couple Seeing Assistant apps. Um, that seemed really interesting. Again, I haven't played a lot with that. Part of it is, is it is a little bit difficult to, to do a lot of GPS stuff in Korea. So um, of course there's Google Maps, you know, that's, that's built in and that's gonna be there. Uh, no matter what. But uh, yeah, I would say Nearby Explorer or Lazario are the ones that I've heard really good things about. Lazario yep. is cheap. Yep, sorry, that, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Jenny. I'm really interested in this device, so I will um, be in touch with uh, Stuart or Carl at, at some point uh, soon to discuss further, if that's okay. Brilliant. Thank Kevin you. Thank you, Stuart. Yep. Thanks, guys. Please do give us a shout. Yep. Um, right, we've got the la uh, last hand for the moment. Carol Adams, if you could unmute yourself, please. Audio. Yeah, can you hear me? We've hey, Carol. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Um, so I, I don't know whether, Jenny, you'll be able to actually answer this because um, um, I, it's kind of a, a, a thing that we have here with the, you may be able to answer some of it. So I was going to ask about um, things like audio description. I do know that on the Polaris, the actual um, like Netflix and stuff like that work, but I have not been able to use a sort of ITV player, BBC iPlayer, anything like that doesn't seem to be work on it. Um, so I was just wondering about that and also whether it, you can have like, a, you know how on iOS you can turn audio description on or off for things. Uh, that sort of thing. And also, will it work on Clubhouse? So those are my sort of three questions, really. Well, so just I, I'll just answer, uh, just to help Jenny, I'll just answer the one about BBC, Carol, uh, because we had another user who had an issue with BBC. And of course, we don't get BBC iPlayer over here either. But one of the challenges with BBC was that the Android app uh, was a little bit too new for the Polaris. Um, and even when we did install the app, it was a little bit sluggish. So I think that's going to be a much better. And Clubhouse, of course, is not available at the moment, is only for, available um, for the iPhone at the moment, yeah, but it is coming to Android. It's coming for Android. I read that the other day. It is on the way. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, but what about, so what about the, the audio description itself on and off? So that's going to depend on the application. That, oh, that right. won't be Polaris specific. That'll depend on oh, um, the Android application itself. So you wouldn't be able to sort of like turn it on and off like you can with iOS sort of thing. So if you're like watching something, if you go on, if you actually go online and watch it without an app or something like that, do you know what I mean? You... Oh, the, I, don't... I think I do. Um, I haven't really used this function in iOS, but I think I do know what you're talking about. Um, that's interesting because Google, does some of that automatically. Um, but honestly, I haven't done that myself again. I sort of find description sometimes gets in my way. Um, so this is probably not something I would use. Um, huh, that's an interesting question. I will have to explore that because Google has some of those same functions. Um, but I don't actually, like I said, I don't know. It's not something that I've tried. Um, I, I'm very worried at the moment because my Polaris Mini has actually been sent twice to be sorted out by HIMSS and I don't know where I'm going to stand. I'm a bit worried and I'm thinking, you know, is this a, is this a, a something that's an issue going to be an issue with the new one? I, it kind of makes you cautious, even though I know it sounds great. I'm, I'm really worrying. <laughs> well, that's, you know, the problem is that we, part of it is we are still in beta. Um, so we, and we're still in development, so we're not even finished. So part of the problem is that we haven't tested every situation. I mean, we yeah. really haven't. And so we'll be doing that, of course, the more people get this in their hands and, and that, but the, that kind of thing, it may not even be Polaris related. 
I mean, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if Android does that, you know, so it can't, oh, it's not always going to be the braille sense that's going to be at fault or not. Sometimes it, it might be, um, but it, it doesn't necessarily stand to reason that it is. It may just be that Android doesn't have said function. Yeah. Um, yeah, because um, I was thinking that is the, is the mini, um, obviously the same with both the Polaris and the um, six, is the mini kind of made in the similar way to the big yes. one? It, I mean, because it just seems to me like the, a motherboard issue twice to me, and um, I'm concerned naturally. And, I, you know, you spend a lot of money and I don't want to, do you know what I mean? I understand that. Um, this is completely different hardware. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, it's not going to be, the issues that you have probably wouldn't parallel, um, oh, okay. you know, it's, because it's it's not, it's actually not, it's not even upgrading the current hardware. It's completely different. I mean, oh, as far as it goes, it looks very similar on the outside, but what's on the inside is entirely different. I see. It's, it's nothing related to the current Polaris. Oh, I see. Okay. And, and I'm putting you down to being majorly unlucky, Carol, because compared to the amount of units we've sold yes. to what we've had come back with um, motherboard issues, it, it's not even registering. Yeah, I mean, I'm so I'm so gutted as well because it's on it's out of warranty um, now. So I'm I'm very gutted, and I'm thinking I've just paid all that money, and it's like year and a half well I got it off someone else that hadn't had it very long and it's very worrying and I, I am very concerned but I know I do get it I know that it's not with every machine it's just it does make you worry and especially being without it for so long it's you know what I mean it's, it's it, when it's your right hand and you lose it well it's part of your life isn't it and that's yeah. the point and when it's not there it, it's basically someone's taken your your communication away from you yeah. it's what you use every day yeah. and i totally appreciate that maybe it'll be worth um having a chat with us off here yeah okay and um and we'll see what we can do i was going to suggest that and carl if you want to get in touch i know i've been chatting to you before yeah. so do get in touch with me if you want and we can have a chat about it i'd also suggest maybe when the product is released that we arrange to get you a demo so that you can get actually sit down and you know just to have your hands on the machine yeah. maybe with one of the sales guys or oh my god hopefully at that stage we'll be doing face-to-face -face stuff again we are already yeah well Car carl is yeah he, he's <laughs> super so yeah just just give us a shout when you're ready carl um, and I'll, I'll have a chat with you yeah because other people are, are asking me questions and i'm I'm saying, look, mine's already gone back twice. And they go, oh, no, does that mean we shouldn't get it? And I'm thinking, oh, God. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to say this to people. <laughs> well, this, this is what I mean. And I could literally show you the stats of what we've had returned to what we've sold. Yeah. And you would just literally sit there and bang your head against a brick wall and think, I'm cursed. Well, I know someone is dealing, is, my husband is talking to someone about it. So I'm not quite sure who it is. But, um, but yeah, uh, I, I I'm just getting worried. The more time goes on, the more I'm thinking, how much is it going to cost as well? So. Look, it should, it just if you get in touch with us anyway, Carol, after the yeah. session, and we'll see, what we, we'll have a chat. Yes, thank you. Okay. And, and there is a fact that we've all got demo units that have not exactly been used a lot. So there might come a time where we might be able to do you a deal on one of our um, Polaris. Did you say you've got a Mini? Yes, I have. Yeah, well, we might be able to do a deal on our Polaris Minis that we have. Right. And I, I've had one for a, a while, and trust me, it's probably been out of its case four times. <laughs> um, right. So they're virtually brand new, yeah. and they're, they're kept up to date and always checked and stuff. So there might be an option in that if you don't necessarily want to go down the route of a new six that we can do you a, a, our cost price, shall I say. I just feel like it's a lot more money to spend when I've already had so much trouble you know i oh, know i appreciate that and that's that's why we want to find a solution for you and that, that's what we're here to do is, is, is to find something and a way around to manage it for you without uh, obviously costing you an absolute blooming arm and a leg again i'm not actually working or anything it's really hard at the moment. no so I, I i totally understand that and we will we, we'll sort something out for you i promise thank you so much you're very welcome All right, carol good to talk to you take care you. right one more um hang on two seconds Oh, in the meantime, um, Lorraine has asked, does the BS6 have book reader? And it, I'm assuming it's exactly the same as the Polaris, is it, when it comes to mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yes, it does have the Daisy player. Yep. So there you go. It's got the book reader. That was an easy one. 
Julia Cosgrove. Come in, Julia. Right, hiya. It's Frank Cosgrove, actually. Oh, I was going to say, I thought it would be Frank. How are you doing? I'm all right. Uh, Thank you. Now, the Polaris, I'm glad you put the uh, web-based radio back into it. That's good. Uh, Are you aware of the BBC's change for all its URLs? Because at the moment, that web-based program that's in the U2 doesn't work for BBC. Yeah, this is a... This is a different uh, a different database, so yeah. I'm not entirely sure. But and are you updating the um, Polaris itself? Uh, you know, within the next month or two. Uh, I don't know if it'll be the next month or two, but yeah, we do have a a plan uh, in the works to upgrade the Polaris for some upgrades. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers, Frank. Cheers. Thank you. Right, it's 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 on 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 with you, my dear. Ah, <laughs> well, like I said, I was I had planned to do a little bit more demo, but this ran a lot longer than I thought it might. So, um, <laughs> I know he usually tries to keep these at, at about an hour. So I don't think that I will do that. What I was just basically going to do was overview the um, the new apps, which I kind of already talked about. So, and I will probably make another webinar video on that so, sort of similar to what we just did here with the little um, short vignettes. Of how how about we get you back in, in a while? Yeah. Maybe just um, before it's due for its possible F- release. Because I'm sure there'll, we can be, focus there'll more be changes. On software. Yes, yeah, there and there will, will and there will be changes. Yeah. There'll be updates. So yeah, let's I, I do think that. That's a, I think that's a good idea, and I think everybody will want to hear that as well because it's a, it's obviously going to go down the route of some things that may have changed, and I'm sure things will change. So okay, yeah. Um, I am looking just because he asked about the BBC. Uh, sorry, I don't have my audio on, but well, here I can fix that too. Voice on. Result list. BBC World Service News URL. HTTP. BBC World Service for Africa URL, HTTP, NPO Radio 1 URL, NPO Radio 2 URL. Uh, so I'm getting quite a few results. I don't, it doesn't look like maybe it's all of them. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but this is the new channel search and it looks like they are coming up. So uh, hopefully, I guess. We NPO, can... BBC World Service for Africa URL, HTTP, BBC, the BBC World Service News URL, HTTP, Hang description, on. provide Let's add channel button, play button. Let's try to Loading. play it and see if Title. It... there are no items to display static box. Oh, I think you're right. I think it's the same problem. I think they're outdated because it actually isn't playing. All Anywhere. right. And very good. Okay. I need to write down all this <laughs> stuff. And... <laughs> That's why live webinars are such good fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was, I, know. I, I was sitting there about to end it then. Just like quick, shut it off. The answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, all good. There's a lot of things that looks like I need to check on and follow up, which is not a big deal. That's what I'm here for. So um, yeah, we will try to take a look at that and see what's going on because it does look like we do have the same problem with the, the new channel search as well, that they're uh, outdated URLs. So we will check uh, on that. Thanks uh, for letting us know. Okay, uh, Jenny, thank you so much. I'm very conscious of the time for you as well. I think it's not far off midnight, so we really <laughs> appreciate you staying so long with us and giving us so, uh, being able being able to 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 stay to answer so many of your questions and telling us so much and showing us so much about the new Braille Sense Six. If anybody wants to follow up with us after this session, you can send an email to sales at sightandsound.co.uk and mark for the attention of Carl or myself, and it will be sent on to us. And I know there's a couple of people who are going to follow up with us uh, directly as well. So that's it for today. Thank you so much, Jenny, for coming along. It's always great to have you at Webinar Wednesday. You, you're, uh, you're booked to come back already. So delighted with that. Sounds good. And thanks, as always, to Carl. And for everyone else, stay safe and stay well. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Mr. Lawler. You are the the hostess with the mostess. Thank you.